Hey guys, welcome to CEM's Will It Digest. We keep asking and you guys keep delivering. Somebody suggested hemp or cannabis products and I just happen to know a guy. Hey Sean. Hey Howie. Good to meet you. Yes sir. Hey, uh, thanks for helping us out today. Uh, now Sean isn't just my hookup, he is actually a co-founder of Agris and on the board of the Southeast Hemp Association. Sean works with hemp farmers to produce some really high quality products and they have been so kind to bring some over for us. So what do you have for us today? Howie, I have a good selection. I have hemp flour, I have hemp seed oil, I have hemp lotions, All right. even hemp coffee, I have hemp hard candies, yes. and I have some of that famous Carolina sweet crude full spectrum extract. Okay. And I heard you had a bum elbow, so I brought something for that. Excellent, excellent. You heard right. So this is all nice that you brought them. Am I supposed to do something with them? Howie, I'm in a rush. Can okay. you analyze these today? It would have been really nice if you would have not only brought samples, but if you would have brought me some help because I'm swamped right now. I know a guy. Hey, Todd. Hey, Sean. What's up? Todd, meet Howie. Howie. Hey, Todd. Todd is the owner of G2 Analytical. Todd is also the chief science officer of Agrist. So Todd, I brought Howie all these samples and I need them run today. Can you help? Sure thing, I have a Mars 6, I love that thing. But Howie, this is a lot of different samples. Are you gonna to try to run all of these in one single batch? Yes sir, I think that's the only way we're gonna get all of this done in the same day. And before we get started, do you wanna stick around? for some tips and tricks first. One of the biggest challenges for cannabis and hemp testing labs is that there are so many different types of products to be tested. From plant material, extracts, to finished products such as edibles and lotions. Howie, I could name you many more. Todd, I am sure you can and trust me, I feel your pain. Now, in order for your lab to be efficient, you need to digest all of these samples in a single batch and our Mar 6 with the Mars Express Plus is up to the task. So let's get these samples weighed out and into the vessels. While we're doing this, I want to point out a couple of techniques that are gonna assist and make sure that we get a nice representative sample, but also get our samples to the bottom of the vessel safely. So for candy, okay, in order to get a nice homogeneous sample, turn it into a nice powder, I will use this cry grinder. Previously, Todd went out back, he took care of business and used this for me. So, with my calibrated eye, I'm gonna go ahead and put a half a gram into our vessel. Uh, we'll just get a little bit more here. That look about right? Sure does. All right, outstanding. So, that's for our crushed up candies. Now, for something like a tincture, I would go with, oh, there we go, a long transfer pipette. Because again, I want to get this all the way to the bottom of the vessel. So, here we go, let me use this. And once again, about half a gram. That sounds about right. Woo! All right, so we have a half a gram of our tincture. Now, CEM has a lot of other tips and tricks, and visit our website at cem.com slash in the lab. So we've already talked about the tincture and the candies. Now let's talk a little bit about the oil. The oil is gonna be the most challenging sample in this batch, and it's gonna require 210 degrees C. Now, many states, including California, require a half gram sample size. That's why a while ago you saw me do a half a gram of the candy and the tincture. We're gonna do the same thing with the oil. Let's finish this up and you can meet me at the microwave. All right, now that all of our samples have been weighed out, acid added, caps torqued down, we're gonna put our Express Plus vessels into our Mars 6 system. To make things easy, I'm going to use our CEM cannabis one touch method. Select, press start, and we're done. While the samples are digested, 
I'm going to kick it up to my new friend Todd so he can tell us a little bit about the history of cannabis and hemp. Well, I know a little, but I know a guy. Hey, Brad. Hey, Todd. How's it going? Great, man. Brad, since you're the president and chief of botanical science at Agris and Growers Hemp, I was thinking you might be the perfect person to tell us a little bit about cannabis. Well, I'll see what I can do. So, as we know right now, cannabis has been cultivated for at least 12,000 years in a region that's currently known as Mongolia. Um, this places cannabis as one of the earliest cultivated crops that we have a record for. So, when we're talking about records in cannabis in the history, the oldest references we've been able to find the cannabis dates all the way back to 2727 BC, when the Chinese emperor Xin Nun sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, um, supposedly discovered the substance and used it medicinally. The history of cannabis in America dates all the way back to the colonial settlers who grew hemp for a variety of purposes to include textiles, rope, seeds. Because of the fast growing plant, it was easy to cultivate and had many uses throughout the colonial America. In the early 1600s, Virginia, Massachusetts, Connecticut colonies required all of their farmers to grow hemp. These early hemp plants were very low in levels of tetrahydrocannabinol, THC, which is responsible for the mind-altering effects of the left coast cannabis or marijuana. In the United States, marijuana wasn't widely used for recreational purposes until the early 1900s. Massive unemployment and social unrest during the Great Depression stoked public fear of this evil weed or devil's lettuce. This was portrayed in many publications and movies such as Reefer Madness. As a result of this, and consistent with Prohibition's era's view on all intoxicants, 29 states had outlawed cannabis by 1931. The Marijuana Tax Acts came along in 1937, which was the first U.S. federal law to criminalize marijuana nationwide. This act imposed an excise tax on the sale, possession, or transfer of all hemp products, effectively criminalizing all but the industrial uses of the plant. More recently, California became the first state to legalize medical marijuana in 1996. In 2012, Colorado became the first state to legalize marijuana for recreational use. And by 2020, there have been over 15 states in the District of Columbia that have fully legalized marijuana for recreational use. When hemp is concerned, the 2018 Farm Bill removed hemp and hemp seeds from the statutory definition of marijuana in the DEA Schedule of Controlled Substances. It allowed for the cultivation and production of industrial hemp defined as cannabis sativa plants containing less than three-tenths of one percent of THC. The hemp industry was reborn and hemp-based CBD products are among the fastest growing trends worldwide. No pun intended. Well now you know, and now that our samples are digested and cooled, let's get them over to the hood and see how we did. Okay, we've taken our vessels out of the Mars 6, and now it's time to dilute, and let's see just how, how good of a job we did with this mixed batch of samples. So this first one is our flower sample. Oh, look at that. Lots of good gas. Had a good pressure build up there. Pour it out into our digi tube. Okay, let's get a little bit of a transfer. Hey, it's hard to notice, but you may see a little bit of salacious material at the bottom of this digi tube. And we'll cover that in a few minutes. And let's go ahead and get one more done. I believe this was the oil. If you remember, the oil was the real reason we had to run 210 ah. degrees C in our mixed batch. That was a lot of gas. Oh, look at all that. Okay, very nice. Here we go, another clear colorless particle free. All right, just give me a few more minutes and I'll wrap these up. All right, let's take a look 
We had four different samples in our run. Let's see how we did. First, I want to take a look at the flower. Now, this has a little, little bit of uh, white particles at the bottom, some salacious material. What you can do here, we can do an HF digest, or we can simply centrifuge or filter. Here's my elbow saving balm that I used. Uh, looks really nice, clear, colorless, and particle free. Here are the yummy gummies. They were actually really good. And after we ground them up, you can see clear, colorless, and particle free as well. And now here was the most difficult sample, the 210 degrees C that we had to use because of the oil. But once again, all the samples in one batch, still clear, colorless, and particle free. So can we digest multiple types of hemp and hemp products in a single batch? Was Robbins, North Carolina once named Hemp, North Carolina? Yes, it was, and yes, we can. Guys, thank you so much for coming out today. And Todd, I couldn't have prepped all these samples without your help. To learn more about the great work these guys do, visit globalproductgroup.com and tune in next time to answer the age-old question, Will it digest?